Hello everybody and welcome to another weekly update. Uh, my name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Uh, welcome to these updates where I talk about some of the work that I've managed to get up to this week. And of course, uh, continuing on from last week, we're going to talk about two separate programs. The first is the Bug Accelerator 2023 program. This is where the Inkscape project is paying me to basically fix problems, especially high priority issues before the 1.3 release to increase the stability and basically make it so that when Inkscape is released, a lot of the issues that have cropped up have been fixed in advance. Um, okay, so I worked on fixing the uh, Cairo Glyph offset problem. Um, I mentioned it before. I managed to actually, um, f I managed to pin the correct packages and do the, like the, the, the Windows build work. Uh, but it turned out that the problem turned out to be more complicated than I first thought. Um, a tester is currently looking at trying to figure out like what exactly is going wrong. And hopefully we'll be able to get a more concise fix in place. Uh, I fixed a bug where the pasted ob objects sometimes appeared in the root layer instead of um, in the layer that you were in. This was because of a conflict between the option um, paste on top and the uh, object start dialog basically caused it to paste on top of the layer, which would put it in the root. Um, this has now been fixed. Uh, okay, so there was a problem with the desk color being lost. This is where you would set your pre preference for how you wanted Inkscape's desk to, to look, and that preference wouldn't be maintained. Um, I managed to fix that. There was a whole bunch of XML parsing problems as well as us not explicitly setting what the desk color should be. It was trying to guess what the desk color should be. And what I've done is I basically refactor all of that so that now desk color is explicitly set in the preference. Um, and it's something that we should basically allow you to set to any color you want. Um, but fixing that XML issue also fixed a bunch of other issues that had cropped up. Uh, basically, anytime you tried to do something with the named view, uh, XML object uh, with an extension or some other pro process that basically compared to XML values that had broken. Uh, that's all fixed now, thank thanks to that first fix. Um, I fixed a problem with a SVG file that had an infinitely small arc curve, uh, which basically caused Inkscape to crash. I've not fixed the arc curve itself, but I have stopped Inkscape from crashing. Um, which is, you know, good. Uh, I did a big refactoring of the markers code base. So this is mostly what I spent the first part of the week on. And it's, um, we had a lot of duplicate code between um, outputting to PDF, outputting to uh, WMF, outputting to printers, outputting to SVG, outputting to the screen. All of these things have to calculate the orientation of the marker and also its color style, so like whether it inherited the style from the, the object that it's on, for example. Um, this has been fixed by essentially refactoring the code base so that all of those cal calculations happen in, a, in the same place, so that if a bug happens in the future, um, we won't have a, the situation where we had this, this time round where um, you know, there was a problem with the printout, so there's a problem with the PDF output, but people were just fixing it in that one place and then not forgetting to fix it in all of the other places where this code was duplicated. Um, removing code is great, love it. And it fixed about six issues in one go, which I really love. Um, okay, so that was the Bug Accelerator pro program. Uh, big thanks to the Inkscape pro project and everybody that don donates to Inkscape for sponsoring my, my work. Uh, let's get on to the Patreon sponsored stuff. So this is where you users directly fund my work. You get to boss me around, tell me what things in Inkscape need, need to be fixed or what features need, need to be added or where my focus needs to be. Um, okay, so the, the uh, objects dialog, what I've done is um, last week, I think it was last week, I added an option where you could basically stop it from um, automatically drilling down into the selected layer uh, and scrolling, which caused a lot of pro problems with large documents. Uh, the user experience pro pro problems were, though, that that like pre preference all the way hidden in the pre preferences wasn't accessible enough. 
Um, so a user experience, a user design change in the objects dialog now has a settings pop up. You can click that. You can get the two chat boxes, which are the two preferences for the objects dialog, and you can set those specifically. A uh, bit of refactoring in, in that code too to make it smoother. Hopefully, allow us to add more options in in the future, uh, and just smooth over like what, where the objects in the dialog design comes from. Um, I also tried to fix a user experience problem problem with the resized resize page to selection. Um, what's happening here is is that we have a functionality where you can resize the page to the selection. I fixed it so that it was resizing the page, the selected page, not just the first page, but any whatever page you have selected to the selected objects correctly. But um, the, a lot of people were kind of trained to go to the document pre preferences, set margins in that little toggle button thing, and then resize the page to create a, a page with you know preset margins. Um, I did fix it so that you could use the page mar margins in the exact same way, uh, but people couldn't find it. Like they couldn't find the the connection between this the the pages toolbar where you could set the margins, and the resize to selection. So what I've done is I've added that button in uh, to, to the pages toolbar itself so that you can actually resize to the selection directly. I put it right next to the page size uh, drop, drop down so to, to, to give it some context. And it's, uh, it's, it's on the other side of the margins box. So it's as close to the margins preferences that you can get. Uh, and I'm gonna have to continue to test it because um, feedback is, is that like different designers are having different opinions about how uh, margins and and the preference to resize should be orientated like is is do people mean margins when they talk about resizing and creating a gap between the edge of the page and the selected object uh, and and are we just trying to reuse the same uh, value when we should have different values these are all design decisions which have not been made and I haven't seen a really uh, convincing design yet for like what they should look look like to sort of clear up uh, any user experience confusions, but hopefully this button will be sufficient. Uh, not the best, but better, I hope. Um, I also um, uh, fixed up and refactored a bunch of stuff with the with the units and making the margins a little bit more responsive. Okay, so that's what I've been getting up to. All the things that have been going on in Inkscape. Um, so Mykov has added a preference to basically uh, save the height of night dialogues so that if you have multiple dialogues on the side, the heights of those dialogues weren't being saved so they would, every time you open up Inkscape, it'd be reset. He's added a, a, a thing to save that, which is great. Mark continues the Sisyphean effort of continuing to fix the Windows build. It seems like every five minutes, uh, MSYS releases a new li library and it breaks in Inkscape again. Uh, so nice work, nice work, Mark. <laughs> Just keep rolling that that boulder up up the hill. Uh, PBS has been fixing important crack crash crashes. Uh, there's a DPI change bug uh, and the dropper tool. I believe that those both caused Ink Inkscape to crash, and he's fixed those. Uh, Rene has been continuing his work on on his Mac OS packages as well as organizing for the Hackfest, which happens in a couple of weeks. Um, there's a lot of uh, excitement around basically joining up physically and seeing each other for the first time in many years since since COVID. Uh, Jonathan has been working to onboard the new AI uh, importer hire, the person who we've hired to basically write a, an importer for Adobe Illustrator files. Um, and he's also st starting to um, create a proposal for hiring people to help with the GTK4 migration. This is a migration that hopefully should allow Inkscape to be a lot faster. Um, fingers crossed, you, you know. Uh, so this is all great work. Um, big thanks to everybody that works on In Inkscape because, uh, you know, we're getting up to the 1.3 release now, so it, it things seem to be getting faster and a bit more stressy. But uh, you know what? When you when you actually lay down all of the work that everybody gets up to, it's just a ton of stuff going on. Um, so that's all I have for you this week. Thank you for jo joining me for this video. Um, I hope to see you all next week. We're just going to have to see what 
kind of noise the birds are making on this microphone output. <laughs> 